Okay, I'm starting. Welcome home! Yes. Yes. Woo. This is our, uh, our uh, what do they call it when you're just passing through? <laughs> our transition home. Uh, for some, you've been here before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's Brother Moore. Oh. Others, uh, your first encounter with the Pentecostals and more similar to the other sanctuary. So today we get the old school. Yeah. Yeah. So it's exciting. And uh, I know throughout the next couple weeks you'll be switching seats and looking around. Uh, that, that felt good, but not great. So let me try over here. And then someone else, you'll come in and you'll be like, that seat felt really great. What are you doing in my seat? <laughs> Nobody claim, can claim any seats right now, okay? Um, just thankful for what God's doing. I want to say thanks to everyone that was able to make it yesterday. I know a lot going on, busy life, and everything else, but thank you for those that were able to make it and all the hard work and also the prayer that has gone in. I have prayed over this transition and prayed through this service, and I feel the presence of the Lord. Yes. Why don't we go to the Lord in prayer and just ask the Lord to have his way? Lord, I thank you, Jesus Christ, for my brothers and sisters. Come on, would you lift your voice? Thank you, Lord God. Lord, that you have come to this place. You are here to meet us in a powerful way. Lord, we will exalt you and praise you and worship you, God. Lord, this is your house. This is your sanctuary. This is the place that is set aside for worship and for praise to your holy name. And so, God, we want you to be glorified. You to be honored, oh God. We release ourselves, God, from any fear. God, we just want to allow your spirit to move us however you want to move us, Lord. God, have your way. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, let the church say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's so good to see everyone in here. It's so cozy and so exciting. God is so good. I was reminding the worship team this morning, even though we're in a different room, we're in a different place right now. This is still a house that God is in. And this is a house of miracles. And I'm just believing over the next couple months in this room, we're going to see miracles. We're going to see people receive the Holy Ghost. And when we go back into our other building, we're going to have new people with us. How many can agree with me and believe that?
every lonely heart, oh God. I lift them today, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Thank you. 
for a second. Thank you for worshiping with us. I know it's different. It, it, we were feeling a little different, but you know what? God just came in and just took over and I'm thankful for that. Thank you, Jesus. He is such a good God. You give him your best. The Lord help you. He loves you. We are so glad that all of you are here today. Thank you all for being here. And um, I'm just so so excited for what God is doing for our church. He is blessing, and as my husband said, it was such a blessing to went home last night. I was just so grateful for all the people that came and helped and was a part. It wasn't just a work day, but it was a it was just a camaraderie. It was a fun day of everyone being together. I'm just so thankful for all of you. Um, God is so good. I do want to remind you that this Tuesday is our Thanksgiving service. So we will be having service at 7 p.m. here on Tuesday. Um, we will not have service on Wednesday due to the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. We wish everyone a very happy Thanksgiving. But if you are able to come, we would love for you to come. We're just going to have an open time um, of giving you thanks and being able to share and thank God for what he's done in our, in our lives this, this year. Um, so we're so thankful for that. Coming up December the 8th, which is in a couple Sundays, will be our kids program, kids Christmas program. You don't want to miss it. It's always a fun time. They were telling us about the little ones acting out. I said, that's the best part. Yeah. When the little bitty ones get up here and um, act silly. I just, they're so cute. So, um, but uh, it's going to be a great time. They've been working hard for that. So come and support that. Then on Sunday, December the 15th, we'll be having our Christmas service. So we'll be having some singing and, and some different things. It's just going to be a great time of worshiping the Lord as part of Christmas. Um, also, coming up on December 22nd and December 29th, we will only have one service. So that will be the Sunday before Christmas and the Sunday after Christmas. So plan on that. There will be no Sunday school on those days. Um, and then we will let you know as it gets closer uh, what January holds. Um, we're still deciding about January. So. Anyway, but those are the dates for December. So I know I want you to sit down. I'm not out of breath as you can tell, but let's all stand and find somebody. Um, we're all scattered different, so we're trying to help somebody get on
It's not your seating capacity, it's your sending capacity. Amen. I think that's what Brother Stan Gleason said. So, Amen. Now, I'm not sending anybody out of here. I want y'all to stay. But every once in a while, you're going to have somebody. Not your seating capacity, but your sending capacity. Amen. Praise the Lord. Every Bible turn to the book of Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3 and verse number 14. Joshua 3 and verse number 14. Thank you all for coming to the house of the Lord and worship the Lord. Amen. It feels good. Probably you're right. What a good to worship. Amen. In time, your talents, your treasures. I'm a little partial to the one that was leading. I get mushy now. Joshua chapter 3, 14. And so it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as those who bore the Ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priests who bore the Ark dipped in the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflowed all its banks during the whole time of the harvest, that the waters which came down from the upstream stood still, and rose in a heap very far away at Adam, and the city that is beside Zeratan. So the waters that went down into the Sea of Arabia the salt sea failed and were cut off, and the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Then the priest who bore the Ark of the Covenant, the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. Amen. I would preach, and uh, maybe I'm linking this to Wednesday nights and even things that I've talked about in the past, but I want to preach for future generations. For future generations. Amen. Would you take one of your loved ones by the hand or somebody that's standing close to you, appropriate, take their hand and put your hand on their shoulder. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you, God, for your spirit that's in this place. For the next couple minutes, Lord, we ask God, you would move and that you would minister, Lord. We have felt your presence. We have felt the moving. Come on, that's it. We have felt the moving of the Holy Ghost in this place. Lord, your spirit is greater than our spirit that we are the children of God. And now I pray all across this building that the spirit would move and would minister and would touch and would heal, Lord. There are needs in this building that need your attention, God. I pray that you would do a work in this place by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you as you are being seated. Transition is the process or a period of changing from one state or condition to another. It has somewhat of a different, taken on a different and kidnapped in this hour by a different definition. The transition that I'm talking about today is a tra transition that was really important for both Moses and Joshua. The Bible says that God has spoken to Moses and said that he was going to raise up someone and that someone would be Joshua. And it was for something that would happen in the future. And the time has come that Moses is being moved out of the way and Joshua is being brought on to the scene. Moses is a hard act to follow. <laughs> Man, he's not an easy one. He's not an easy one to follow after. In fact, he's the guy that heard the voice of God speaking to him from a burning bush. He is the one that was prophesied before he would be the one that would deliver the children of Israel out of the land of bondage. He was the one who had a rod that if he threw it down, it would turn into a serpent. And then he would pick it back up and then it would turn back into a rod. He was the one who could stick his hand into his garment and then pull it back out and it would be full of leprosy. And then he would put it back in and he would pull it back out. The thing is, none of these acts were of his own power nor of his own strength. It was behind, uh, it was the things that was uh, unseen that was doing the work of God. But nevertheless, it was said about Moses that he was an extremely humble man that walked with God. 
It was Moses who had the power to bring ten plagues through the word of the Lord upon the children of Egypt. And it was the last plague, which would be the death angel, which would pass through the land that would destroy all the firstborn of those whose blood of a lamb, a spotless lamb, did not cover the doorpost. The only thing that would protect them would be the spotless blood of the lamb. And it was this Moses who had a name among the children of Israel who had done miracle signs and wonders. This Moses was a hard act to follow. Amen. Amen. He had direct communication with God. The Bible says that he spoke to God face to face. So much that his face glowed with the glory of God because of his conversation with God. And then God said, Moses, my servant, is dead. By the law that Moses had accomplished, there came a time where transition would have to happen. Moses, my servant, is dead. But Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 starts with a prophetic promise, which is so powerful. Listen to this verse. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. In other words, God was saying that everything's going to be all right. Transition is never comfortable, yeah. am I right? Yeah. Man, whenever you move from one place to the next, whether you're moving from an old house and buying a new house, whether you're buying an old uh, buying a new car, and uh, uh, the transition is never easy because of your moving from one thing to the next. And, but imagine Joshua is having to take the reins over of a nation, millions of people, and yet God is saying that everything's going to be all yeah. right. Yeah. You know what happened in this service? I felt the Holy Ghost sweeping in here and moving in here. And God was confirming, every, at least in my spirit, that everything's going to be all right. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 In fact, I would say that God always has something better than what I experienced yesterday. God always has something good in store for those who hope by faith and not by sight. That's why the church in Warrington, Missouri, we are not afraid or nervous. We are not shook up about the uh, elements of the world or our city because we know the God that we serve has power, has authority, has the ability to do all things well. And so we rest that God will be with us. Yes. Amen. Amen. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you. Amen. Seems like Jesus when he went away. I don't know about you, but I kind of understand why the disciples went and hid out. I mean, the one who said he was, hallelujah, that he could do anything and that he was, he was here to restore the kingdom is now in the grave. Amen. Jesus is buried, and I know I'm making a transition, but it's uncomfortable, isn't it? You're like, how do I follow this? From Moses to Jesus. Well, just follow, okay? <laughs> Amen. Moses is now Jesus, and Jesus is now in a grave, and the disciples are shook up because of this transition. What's going on? But Jesus had prophesied that on the third day, I'll come back to life. And just like Jesus had promised them, guess what? On the third day, he came back to life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He stuck on the scene and said, it is I. Be not afraid. And everything, everything's going to be okay. I've come yeah. to preach to somebody in this place that the God the, uh, of Moses and Jesus, uh, Jesus being God Almighty, yeah. is still alive and well. And he is yeah. in this place right now. And it's the very promise is for you. I don't care what you're facing on this Sunday. I don't care what you're up against. I come to tell you that everything's going to be all right. Yeah. We serve a God who has all power and all authority yeah. and has all ability. Amen. And so everything's going to be all right. Jesus, whenever he went away, said, I won't leave you comfortless. I will send my spirit 
to you. In other words, you're not to be by yourself. I'm going to come to you. And that is the promise of God for everyone under the sound of my voice that God's promise is this. That even, and I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to uh, uh, some stones in this place. Amen. I'm going to get to some folks in this place, and, and and I'm going to take you down memory lane. But even in transition, and even in a moment like this, uh, where your dancing aisle might be over there, you've got your place and your position where it's comfortable, and right now it's not. But I promise you, I would love it if by the end of this service, you said, I just carved out a new dancing spot. I just, come on, I just laid claim right here. This is the place where the Lord came through for me. On a Sunday morning, I lifted my hands. And the power of God fell. This is the memorial to me right here. Joshua was promised. He was promised, and man, everything's going to be all right. I need that assurance, don't you? Yeah. I need that assurance. Our faith is built on God's faithfulness. Amen. Our faith is built on God's faithfulness. Joshua knew he could trust God because of God's track record. Amen. I don't know the song, I like it. He never lost the battle, and the devil <laughs> That's not just words that we're speaking. That's right. And then, when sin is out of the camp, listen to me, folks. When I have come to a place in my life where I have laid my sin at the feet of Jesus Christ and I have relinquished myself of not my will but your will, can I tell you he's never lost a battle? Amen. There are stories in the word of God that look like it was God who lost the battle, but it was actually sin in the camp. But when I get sin out of the camp, and can I tell you something? God is rooting for you that you get sin out of the camp. And how do you do that? You say, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned, and I have fallen short of the glory of God. And you know, when you repent your sin, God forgives you, and you know what happens all of a sudden? Your battle that seems like you're losing, it's going to turn around you all the way. Get back up and walk on. Why? Because 
Joshua has his Jordan, but Joshua has faith because he understands his faith is not built on anything, but it is built on, on the one thing, and that one thing is the God who was the God of Moses. If his faith was built on Moses, then Moses is somewhere in the mountain buried, but because his faith is built on the God of Moses, uh, and because his faith is in the God of Moses, he knows that that Jordan isn't that big a deal. Come on, somebody. Yeah. God didn't tell Joshua, I want you to lift up your hands over the Jordan River. I want you to do it just like uh, uh, the like uh, Moses did. But what I do want you to do is I want you to have a step of faith in the direction. Let me tell you something. It's not easy for a preacher, a pastor, a congregation to take a step like we've taken. That foundation, if you want to see it now, go after church and go look. You can see the crack across that foundation. And it's not always easy to make these kind of steps up because everybody, come on, everybody has an attachment. Like my wife talked, like Brother Hearn talked this morning. We have attachments to things. Uh, and it's hard sometimes for us to let go. But I'm telling you, God has brought us to a place uh, where we can step into a, into a direction uh, where you and I can somehow get our faith. Hang on, but you know what I say? I say. 
say we hang them all on the cross. I dare to say you're my God. I'm God in the church. I had a history with you in the church and in the present, but I'm looking forward to what's coming in the future. God of the God. It's that girl. And because we had a relationship with God, God said, I am the Lord and I fail not. By faith, by my, my mercy is new every morning. Aren't you thankful for the faithfulness of God? Yes. Amen. I'm thankful for the faithfulness of God. It wasn't enough to have faith in the past, uh, but he had to have faith in the God of the present. Hallelujah. He had to have faith in the God of the present. And God said, I want you to tell the priest. Uh, and what the priests are going to do is they're going to come to that overflowing Jordan River. And they're going to get to the overflowing Jordan River. I'm not going to push the waters back for them. They're going to have to take a step of faith. Uh, and when they take a step of faith, uh, all of a sudden something supernatural is going to happen. Uh, there is a key player in this church who is going to step out and they're going to say, I don't care if the building looks different. I don't care. I'm going to dance in the aisle. I'm going to rejoice in God. I'm you know what everybody's thinking? Oh, I wonder who it is. I, I wish I had a mirror to pass out to everybody and have you look in the mirror because that somebody is you. God is just waiting for us to get out of our cell. And say, you know what? Every one of us got a story we got to go. You know what? It's uncomfortable at times. At times, I'm a little, I'm a little uncertain about how I feel right now. But I feel God moving in the hand. I'm feeling to go lay hands on somebody, but I'm a little reluctant. I say while we're here, before we get there, let's get rid of all the They stepped their feet in the Jordan River, and the Bible says that all of a sudden there was a party of the water. It rolled, it stopped up, it stopped up here, it was piling up. I don't know how high it piled. We went down there for my brother's memorial service. We drove around the, the water dam, and as we're driving around, they're all in Har on Harleys and you know, suits of cars. And I'm, Man, as we drove around that, we took pictures, didn't we? I should have had to put them up. We took pictures of where the water was dammed up. Yeah, it was all held up. We didn't take any pictures over here of the, of the camera. That's where the water could have been, but it wasn't. It was all up there. I just, in my mind, I would just see God. I don't know it. I would say it was his angels, and they were just kind of leaning. <laughs> they were just holding that back. They were saying, everything's going to be all right. Come on, my, my people are stepping where they need to step, and because they are. Things are being pushed back that's hindering them before I'm getting to their promise. Yes, I'm just going to follow the Spirit. I'm out of my nose. I'm sorry. Let me tell you something. You know what God is saying? Some of us aren't taking the step of faith. I'm not saying everybody in here. I'm saying me at times. And we are hindered by the obstacle that is hindering our faith. Whether it be fear or doubt or sin or whatever it might be. But if we ever give that to God and say, bless God, I'm putting my in the water. I'm stepping out by faith. I'm going to do what the preacher said last Sunday. I'm going to allow God to be my hand. I'm going to open my wallet and I'm going to give it over there. You want to know something? I believe that God could pay this church off in half the amount of time. They said in 15 years. I say God could pay in seven and a half years. That's right. I'm happy about that. You know why? Because some of us are going to say God is going to move us in the finances so that the what we give will not be all that we have. It will just be a small percentage of a blessing. Hey, I'm not going prosperity on anybody. 
Hallelujah. I'm waiting here. We're commanding. God's waiting. The water is just bubbling. You know? yeah. it's, it's stirring and it's bubbling and it's saying, I wonder if they're going to be here. I, I, wonder, I, wonder, I wonder if they're going to go across the aisle and they're going to get their hands on somebody. Yeah. Hey, come on. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Some brother and sister going through it. Oh, they're praying. They're saying, I want to God. Somebody just put their hands on my shoulder and tell me that God still loves me. And God's telling me, just go tell somebody that I'm talking about. And the Spirit is going to be myself. And the only thing that's keeping us from moving is that little thing called unbelief, doubt, and fear. But God is saying, when my people step out, all of a sudden, the thing that's different is going to be pushed out of the way. So the Bible says while the priest is standing there, 
waiting and the warriors have gone on across. The Joshua had 12 men and he said, go into the Jordan. Get a rock and put it on your shoulder. I want you to put the stone on your shoulder and here's what I want you to do. I want you to carry out of the midst of the Jordan and I want you to carry over to where we're going to camp and I want you to throw it down there because I'm going to build a memorial. Yeah. I want to build something that will be a reminder based on the word of the Lord of what the Lord did on this day. Yeah. And so the Bible says that there, not only was it a, an act of faith, it was also an act of a memorial for future generations. And the Lord would speak to Joshua, and Joshua would build the memorial. And I feel the Holy Ghost so strong right now. I feel the Spirit of the Lord so strong in this place right now. I don't understand. I don't understand all the workings of God. I don't know how many times they came back to Gilgal in future times. Made that journey back to Gilgal. Maybe Daddy was out running some sheep, and it had been 40 years. 50 years, 60 years, and they came up to the monument there at Gilgal, where the children of Israel had first camped after coming across the Jordan. Mama said, or Daddy said, son, you know what these stones here are? They're a memorial for what the Lord has done. Amen. They're a memorial for what the Lord has already done. Daddy, tell me the story, would you? Would you tell me what it was like? Would you remind me what it was like? Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, man. Grandpa, or your grandpa told me that he was one of them that picked the stone up. He said it was dry ground. We picked that stone up. We couldn't believe it. And I hosted, I hosted that thing on my shoulder and I carried it across. I, I thought I'm doing something that's going to outlive me. There's something powerful in what I'm doing here in this moment. It seems like a simple act. It doesn't have much value to just the stone, but the value wasn't in the stone. It wasn't a ruby or a diamond. It wasn't a pearl. It wasn't of any value, but there was something of great value. When they dropped that stone, in that moment's time, it would become a memorial. And I'm telling you, son, and I'm telling you, Grandpa helped build this. Oh, Joshua, he, he's the one that erected it, but Grandpa helped do it. Let me tell you something. I find it amazing. I'm almost seeing the spirit. And this is what I've been feeling over the last few days. I'm almost seeing the people of God as they march around and they come back to Gilgal. And they come back to the place of remembrance. And they're and they're and they're they're face to face with what God has done in the past. And the memories are rolling in their mind. Church in Warrington, can you see what's going on in this building? There is something bigger, greater than what meets the eye. We are not rocks. We are living stones. We are the living stones of God. We are the church of the living God. We are built into a lively house where the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of us. And let me tell you, we live. We are a living, breathing memorial of the good works of the Lord. There are testimonies in this building right now. If you were to stand and testify, you would tell of the good works of the Lord that God has done in your life. Amen. 2000, somewhere around 2000. I don't have the exact year. 2001, 2002, whenever it was, they came out and they purchased a piece of property out here. They were having church in the white building, the white sanctuary. But guess what? The Lord moved on Brother Preston and, 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 and led them to this building. This building, when they came here, needed a whole lot of work. In fact, the insurance company, if I'm not mistaken, or they helped, uh, had been hit with hail, right? Yeah. Bunch of damage to the building, which would have cost a lot of money. But they said, I'll tell you what, we'll replace the siding. We'll replace the uh, windows if I'm getting all of this right. Anyway, they, that church with the insurance helped cover the expenses for this building to become where they could move in and use it as a church. Can I tell you something? I want everybody that was here when you moved into this building or you had church in this building, would you stand to your feet? Sister Denny, were you in service here? Time to feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Look around right now. 
I want everybody that's not standing to give these folks a hand clap right now. When they moved in this building, you can be seated. When they moved in this building, I bet there was excitement. And there was a thrill in their heart. They had moved from that white building. And it had issues. Uh, and it had foundational situations going on. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. There was a lot of work that needed to be done. But God opened this building up. Uh, and so you know what they did? They moved in this. Uh, it had already been a church. But they moved in here into this room. Uh, that, that doorway in there. That didn't exist. That was a wall. None of that was here. None of it. You know what the Holy Ghost has been speaking to me? That I've allowed this church to make a full circle back to Gilgal. Back to the place. Some of you all, including with the Lockett Broker, I believe, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost on this carpet. You know what that tells me? That tells me that somebody had a memorial built on this place. Hungry for God, and they're going to be empty in the inside, 
And you know what they're going to say? What need of these memorials? What are these stones? And we're going to say, the God of our salvation found me in sin and darkness, but he forgave me of my sin and washed me in his blood and he filled me with his spirit. And this is what the church is called. This is the church. It's the purpose of the church. It's why we exist. It's why we keep the lights on. Yes. It's why. It's why. It's for future generations. Amen. It's for the future generation. It's so the boy that's right now in that pig pen, who's coming to himself, I'm saying, back in my father's house, I remember when Brother Preston used to preach. I was about eight years old, but I remember sitting in the service, and I remember him preaching, and, and the word of the Lord was coming to me, and, and I was being stirred in my spirit. I remember the first time I went to the altar, and now here I am. I'm addicted to drugs and alcohol and a lifestyle. Maybe there's hope at my father's house. Is it worth leaving the lights on, folks? Is it worth yes. us coming together and worshiping? Yes. Is it worth? Yes, it is. Uh, because I want them to turn into this driveway and say, Thank God, it's still here. Thank God, there's still hope. Thank God, there's still a church of love. Thank God, there's an altar still. Thank God, there's a hope for So, preacher, would you say, let's do a three day fast? At the beginning of every, every month, let's do something. Just fast something. My body says that I want, I want to be comfortable. Yes. It's not about you. When I come and I'm in the middle of a service and I'm tired and I'm weary and I don't feel good and the music starts and I just want to sit down, something in my spirit says it's not about me. It's not, it's not about me, it's about the future generations. It's about what's coming down the road. About the next one that's going to walk through this world. So I invest my time. My time. The same excitement that was felt in two thousand seven, eight, nine, whatever it was. An addition was going to be put on and the hole was cut. And an entryway was made into the next step. About two to three months, this church is going to transition out of here. We're going to move from here. We're going to move through the same door that we were at. We're going to move into a whole different sanctuary. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. going to be really easy over the next couple months to get weary and well doing. It's going to be easy. It's going to be easy maybe to, to just be like, you know what, I'm not buying into this. I don't feel that. I don't sense that resistance. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying the enemy would like to, to work as he can work. I have made up my mind on this Sunday. This first Sunday where God has brought me back to Gilgal. Where God has brought me face to face with the ones who paid the price so that we could be in this building. And also in the next building. 
I'm going to make a commitment. My first commitment is going to be I make a commitment that I'm going to I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to worship the Lord with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my heart. I'm going to continue to pray the normal prayers that I pray, but I'm also going to add, I'm going to pray that God, that God will shut the door, shut the door of the enemy who would try to come in in any way, shape or form. had that conversation when they're expecting a child transition's about to come they'll say I wonder what he looks like I wonder what she looks like I wonder what they'll grow up to be I wonder what their passions will be what their desires will be let's go look closer Feel the Holy Ghost right now. I wonder what he looks like right now. Maybe he's wearing a suit, a tie, and he sets at a bank, and he's a banker who writes out loans. And for the world, it looks like he has it all together, but on the inside, he is a broken man. Maybe she owns her own store, and maybe she looks like she has the world in the Come over, Hander. Or maybe he's that guy who sits on the corner. The life hasn't always been fair. But I wonder what he looks like. I wonder what she looks like. I wonder what God's ambitions. I wonder what his expectations and his desires are for that individual. And I wonder what his dreams and his hopes and his plans are for that individual because they're going to walk through the door. They're going to talk and they're going to come into this church and they're going to be drawn to the altar just as I wasn't here when this church moved from this building to the next. Just as I wasn't here, but I've been brought back to Gilgal. They're on their way. I feel that in the Holy Ghost. They're on their way. So I, I stick in the ground right now. I beg you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, can we open up to the Lord right now, Lord Jesus Christ? Maybe she's strung out, maybe he's addicted. Maybe he's broken or maybe he's well. But he's lost. But this is for future generations. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for this body of Christ. I thank you for this body of believers, Lord. You have called us to you have brought us to another moment. Just reach over and take 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, I move up the Holy Ghost as soon as I don't know about you, but many times for humans, I'm afraid of change because there's a lot of uncertainties. And I remember this past week, I remember the first time when I had to make a decision about the deposit of the children. And I was looking back at all the things I'm up my business and many not knowing what the future holds, and I had no idea what a life for God looks like, and I had no idea what God would have done with my life. I just knew I knew I had to cross over here. And we step out in faith, and you know these rocks, they didn't pick them on the other side of the out of the Jordan, inside the water. It wasn't accessible before God did a miracle. Right. There are things that aren't accessible in your life unless you step out by faith. That's and right. That's a miracle. I wouldn't have the life I have today without picking the testimony of this. And it's over. I would go into that promise. God said that He loves me. He said that He died for my sin. He said, Follow me. Take up your cross and see what I will do. I would never go back. There is no desire after crossing that Jordan to go back to what works. No, no. And you know, those two tribes that decided to stay, that's where they found the herd of the swines. There was nothing left. Because God said, This is where I need my people to be. And I'm going to take them there no matter if you want to go or not. And because some people were afraid and they kind of were hanging on to Egypt in their hearts. Yeah, come on. God couldn't take him across the Jordan. So let us not forget that moment when we crossed over in the Jordan. And you know, we may cross over the Jordan, but there's still things to be conquered. There's still things to be done. There's still cities to be won for him. Amen. He wants to give us the land. It is our promise, but we must continue to walk by faith. Amen. 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 So let us close out in prayer and maybe recommit to that walking by faith and just rebuking fear in our hearts and our minds. And even that uncertainty that tries to rise up in you. I don't know what my, but you know what? I'd rather be in the future that God's the creator of than being in the past stuck because I'm bound by fear. I refuse to live in fear. It's not God. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of joy and of might. He gave us his spirit so we can go across and we conquer. God wants to give us war. There are souls that need to be saved. What a great service this is. I think, and I mean, we haven't been here long, but this is probably one of my favorite sermons. It felt like a church. It felt closed. Yeah. You know, we didn't have to come yeah. up to the altar. We were the yeah. altar. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I yeah. always like small churches and people think I'm crazy, but there's something about yeah. those kind of settings. Yeah. I, I was feeling like they don't need to the upper room. Yeah. Yeah. They, they didn't have this giant place. They were a pride friend in that place. Yeah. But they were all seeking God and His promise. Yeah. They were saying, God, you promised you're going to pour out that spirit. And they were praying. And they said, God, we believe. And even after it didn't happen the following day, they came back. You got to keep coming back. And sometimes we need that memorial to remind us from where we came from and what, why we're here today. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that you give us faith, God, that you give us a holy boldness, God, to move forward in you, God. Lord, that we may hear your voice, God, that we're not afraid of what you're calling us to do, God, but that we step out, God, on the water, that we will cross the Jordan, God, and that we will walk into your promised land, oh Jesus. I pray, God, your blessing upon every single one in this place today, God, that you will go with us, and God, that this will resonate with us throughout the week, God, and that you continue to Find us where you brought us from. And Lord, not only where you brought us from, but where you are going to take us, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I pray.
Amen. You all dismissed. I have a time to dismiss something like this. If you still want to pray, please do so.